up guys, my name is Michael and today we're gonna talk about experimental photography. To be a little more precise, we're gonna talk about splash photography, which is kind of the hardest things to do in experimental photography. Now, as you might have seen on my channel, there's a, a video about the exploding water balloon that I did like I think almost nine or ten years ago. Uh, be sure to check that out. And I have also made a video training that you can download on my website about the chili jumping out of the water. But that's a completely different topic. What we're going to do today is we're going to check out the Meops Splash thing. I don't know. Is there a special name for it? The Meops Splash is a device that can help you with water drop photography. That's something that is, as I told you, pretty difficult to do. And especially the most difficult thing in water drop photography is a drop on top of a drop. You have two drops colliding in the air and creating that awesome splash that just looks so beautiful. Now the way to do that is just about perfect timing. Now with this device you can set up the amount of water and the time in between single drops so you get perfect drop on drop. So the first drop is coming down, it falls into the water, it creates a little wave and ripple and then it comes back up. And that's exactly the time where you need that second drop to hit that one from the top. And this is gonna look so nice. I have already set up this thing. That's the reason why I cannot show you right now. But I was so surprised on how easy it is. So this takes you really just about five minutes to get started. Now there are different ways in which you can set it up. And the Meop Splash has connections for the camera and for a flash. Now the way that I did it, is my camera is on bulb mode and I do a long exposure and the flash will do the exposure for me so the exposure time is gonna be just as long as the flash is lighting up the scene in order to do it like that you need a dark room but as you can see my room is dark you can see it on the edges here and that's the reason why we are doing it that way but there are plenty other ways in which you can set it up. We're not going too much into depth about different ways, but this is the way I did it and I know it works. Just beautiful. Now I'm gonna experiment a little bit with different colors and different heights and different timing and stuff. I'm gonna show you a lot of b-roll footage of the setup right now and uh, I'm gonna show you some pictures that I did with that setup as well. If you have any questions or comments, please just drop me a comment. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to do these pictures by yourself, there's a link to the Meop Splash in the description. Uh, they provide free worldwide shipping. For this price, it's uh, an awesome deal and you will get awesome shots with that. I will also share the settings that I used for my photos in the description. So if you're um, not able to figure out which setting to use with the Meops Splash uh, and you have problems with the timing, you can start with my settings and yeah, find your way from there. Anyway, let's do it. Let's go.
Adobe Lightroom, where I want to show you how I process these images and where I want to show you how the unedited limit images look like. And here, let's go to let's go to this one. This is one of my favorite shots. And as you can see, if I had a macro lens, I would have been able to create a much better cropping. But unfortunately, I had to shoot this on the 18 to 55 and I couldn't get any closer than that. Anyway, it doesn't really matter because I still love this image and I think it doesn't make a huge difference because check out these details. It still looks really awesome even if we get into here like 300% uh, magnification it still looks decent. So anyway, um, let me show you a quick comparison between the final image. Let's go to this one. Final image and the image that came out of the camera. And you can see a huge difference in the contrast, in the cropping, and of course also in the colors. And the colors have changed really drastically. And let's go into this image and let me show you the development settings that I used to get this look. Um, as you can see, I'm in the latest version of Lightroom where we can change the development presets. The development preset that I chose, the profile right here, is Modern 1. And Modern 1 gives you that really um, intense colors that you can see right here. And all the other presets here, they also look fine. I also like this one very much. Or maybe that one as well. So let's go back to Modern 1. Close that one and you can see that I changed the white balance and you can see that I played a lot with the contrast, clarity and dynamic. But the main secret lies in this uh, gradient that I inserted here. And here I decided to get a much cooler white balance in the top of the image. And that goes to the uh, warm white balance that I have set for the rest of the image. So this color shift here is actually movable. So I can move it wherever I want. I don't want to have it here. Because you know the gels that I used didn't produce the colors that I intended. So I decided to go with some color in post-production. Same is true for that image. Let's zoom in right here. Which makes uh, Lightroom load the image because you still saw the artifacts that we had over here. And I've done the same to this because the original image looks like this and you can see it had a little bit of color in it but it just wasn't that much yeah and that's basically all that i did i just wanted to add some color i wanted to add some color contrast because i liked the play between the cool and the warm colors here and once you know how i did it you can really see where this gradient lies and I guess before I told you that you would have believed that I did it with gels yeah that was my secret to processing these images I hope this tip helped you and if we have a look at this image you can see that it's also fine not to do this gradient stuff but whatever you do you, you can be creative in post-production with these images and I think it's worth playing around with the 
white balance and colors and color profiles and everything. And I think there are plenty of other ways that you can still uh, get awesome results. And for me, it was just important to keep a really uh, unique look throughout the whole series that I did so that these images work together as a piece of work that doesn't give a completely new look to every image. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do another session with the uh, Miop Splash again and I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a different setup with the lighting and, and everything. But for this time I got some var variety in the shots and I have the same look and feel across the series at least. Yeah, this one stands out a little bit, but the rest pretty much looks color wise and from the edit, it, it looks the same. Yeah, I hope this, this little insight in my editing helped you and we're now back on camera. All right, guys, I hope you liked the images that I did today. I know I told you that the setup is pretty quick and it really is, but you will spend a lot of time fine tuning the drops because it depends a lot on the height from where the drop drops and the height of the water that it drops into. And there are a lot of var variables in this image, but it's a lot of fun shooting that kind of stuff. Don't forget to take care of good lighting. It's pretty hard to light water. And what I found out is that it looks the best if you light the water from behind. As you saw in the B-roll footage, I had a white backdrop and I put the flash against the backdrop so the water was lit from behind. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting the flash directly into the water because you don't get that nice contrast that you want in that shot. Anyway, leave a comment if you like the editing that I did. As I told you, you can order the Miop Splash in the link in the description. Free worldwide shipping. Thanks to Miops for sending me one of them to play. It was a lot of fun. That was it. Thanks. Bye.